This learning module was developed in partnership with the Colorado Perinatal Care Quality Collaborative. CPCQC leads statewide efforts to address the most common causes of maternal mortality in Colorado. This module will review the background of perinatal substance use and the critical role that labor and delivery units play in addressing this chronic but treatable medical condition. The ideal audience for this module is obstetric care providers, such as physicians, nurses, and midwives who care for pregnant and postpartum people during the hospital admission. We're gonna begin this module with a brief introduction for perinatal substance use before we address perinatal substance use using the five R's. And those are readiness, recognition, response, reporting, and respectful, equitable, and supportive care. The most common single causes of maternal mortality in Colorado, defined as death while pregnant or within 365 days of the end of pregnancy, are suicide followed by unintended drug overdose. The effects of substance use now eclipse better known maternal risk factors, such as hemorrhage and infection. Medical conditions for which healthcare providers are extensively trained to diagnose, prevent, and treat. Perinatal substance use affects patients across all racial and ethnic groups and all socioeconomic groups, including rural, urban, and suburban populations. Pregnancy and postpartum are critical windows of opportunity for the treatment of substance use disorders. During this time, pregnant and postpartum persons have access to health insurance and are often motivated to reduce their use of substances and invest in the health of their child. The healthcare providers who interact with patients during this window play a critical role in addressing perinatal substance use. Maternal deaths are considered preventable if there was at least some chance that the death could have been preempted by one or more reasonable changes at the patient, community, provider, facility, or systems level. With this definition, nearly 80% of pregnancy-associated deaths in Colorado are considered preventable. This is a call to action for all healthcare providers who have to play an active role in the prevention, identification, and treatment in order to decrease maternal deaths due to substance use. Your actions can save lives. Although perinatal patients from all racial, ethnic, and socioeconomic backgrounds are impacted by substance use, there are a few risk factors to consider. The risk of a patient can be evaluated by screening for social determinants of health. Social determinants of health are the conditions under which people are born, grow, live, work, and age. These factors strongly influence health outcomes, including a person's access to medical care, nutritious food, housing, and transportation, as well as their health literacy, social support, job security, and communication capabilities. Screening for social determinants of health or non-medical social needs can assist healthcare providers to identify and address upstream risk factors to both prevent and treat perinatal substance use. A positive screen could indicate the need for an in-depth conversation about needs and challenges. For healthcare providers to have a significant and lasting impact on the health of patients and communities, we must address the needs of the patients outside the hospital and clinic walls. Protective factors against substance use and unintended death from drug overdose include access to comprehensive family planning services to prevent unplanned pregnancies. People with substance use have higher rates of unintended pregnancy and lower rates of family planning access. For persons who do become pregnant, 
continuity of maternal care, including early and regular prenatal care with trauma-informed approach. People with substance use face profound stigma, barriers to healthcare, and even criminalization when interfacing with the medical industrial complex. Access to high quality and continuous prenatal care can be life-saving. Finally, a strong support system for physical, social, and emotional support throughout the preconception and perinatal periods. This system of protection can be both personal for the patient as well as from the healthcare system. Let's look at readiness. Effective engagement of pregnant and postpartum persons affected by substance use requires healthcare professional readiness. This includes an understanding of the protective factors for patients and a clear protocol for routine screening and the knowledge of the resources to provide treatment and referral within your community. Readiness for the identification and treatment of perinatal substance use is a multidisciplinary effort, and it must include nurses, providers, administrators, and community partners. In addition to the protective factors listed in the previous slides, naloxone or Narcan plays an important role in the prevention of unintended overdose. Naloxone is a life-saving medication that can reverse an overdose of opioids, including heroin, fentanyl, and prescription opioid medications. It is a short-acting opioid antagonist that can rapidly reverse the effects of opioids and can be life-saving in the setting of an opioid overdose. Naloxone should be used in pregnant persons in the case of an overdose in order to save that person's life. Naloxone distributed to all patients with an opt-out model is recommended in the perinatal setting. Naloxone was recently made available over the counter and it's helpful for any patient who may use substances or knows someone who uses substances or may come in contact with someone who uses substances. For more training on naloxone, we recommend reaching out to the Colorado Naloxone Project. The recognition of perinatal substance use occurs through universal screening of all pregnant and postpartum persons using a validated self-reported screening tool during each and every hospital admission. Best practice for screening of perinatal substance use includes the following steps. Step one, choose a validated screening tool. CPCQC recommends the Audit C Plus tool, too, which we will look at on the next slide. We recommend talking to your unit administrators to determine which screening tool your hospital uses. Step two, use the screening tool for every patient during their birth admission. Ideally, you will have the patient complete the screening tool on paper and in private. And finally, step three, follow up on that with that patient about their screening tool score. And we'll look at that in the next few steps. The Audit C plus two is one of several validated screening tools. It addresses the use of alcohol, marijuana, and illegal and prescription drugs for non-medical reasons within the past three months. The far right column displays the recommended follow-up screening steps based upon the patient's responses. We recommend this tool because generally it decreases the use of stigmatizing language. CPCQC also recommends the SBIRT method to address perinatal substance use, wherein the S stands for screening, the BI stands for brief intervention, and the RT stands for referral to treatment. The appropriate response to a substance use screen is referred to as a brief intervention. A brief intervention involves discussing the results of the screening tool with the patient, whether that screen was positive or negative. In the labor and delivery unit, if a screening tool is positive, the appropriate response should be to ensure the patient is seen by a social worker or case manager 
and has a postpartum visit scheduled prior to leaving the facility. Screening tools like the Audit C plus two identify patients at risk for substance use disorders, but they are not intended to diagnose a disorder. The appropriate follow up to a brief intervention for a positive substance use screen is referral to a qualified clinician for diagnosis and treatment guidance. Any alcohol or substance use during pregnancy is considered risky and potentially harmful but it might not meet the diagnostic criteria for alcohol or substance use disorders that require medication or referral to specialty substance use treatment programs. Even when screening and further assessment do not identify an alcohol or substance use disorder, referrals might be indicated to address the conditions and the needs that may be relevant to substance use. For example, a mental health care concern or an interpersonal violence concern. Overcoming substance use disorders are not as simple as resisting the temptation to take a substance. Substance use disorder is a chronic, but treatable medical condition. Recovery may involve medication, therapy, or a substance use prevention program. A range of treatment program modalities and settings are available. Some programs may offer special accommodations for parents with an infant. It's important to remember that recovery is possible through treatment. The management and treatment of a diagnosed opioid use disorder during pregnancy are associated with improved maternal and infant outcomes. The American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine recommend medication for opioid use disorder or MOUD management for pregnant and postpartum persons with opioid use disorders. Providing a referral to treatment for a patient identified with a positive use, substance use screen requires an awareness of the resources within your facility and your community. Awareness of MOUD prescribers in your facility and your community is an important for timely and effective referral to treatment. Referral to treatment, including addressing the patient's medical psychological and social needs is accomplished through multidisciplinary care connections and without criminal criminal sanctions. This model of care has the best chance of helping infants and families. Does your facility have a referral resource document for perinatal substance use that's specific to your region of the state? Ask your leadership and if you, they do not have this document, begin to develop it for your facility. Perinatal substance use has a far reaching effect on the family and is associated with increased infant morbidity and mortality. In the United States, the incidence of neonatal opioid withdrawal syndrome or NOWS, a condition seen among infants born to people who have used opioids during the course of their pregnancy, increased by 433% from 1999 to 2014. And between 2000 and 2017, the number of children entering foster care due to parental drug use increased by 147%. For these reasons, multidisciplinary response to perinatal substance use must include neonatal and pediatric care providers. In June of 2020, Colorado made significant changes to the Colorado law related to mandatory reporting. The recent change in statute gives mandated reporters additional discretion in whether or not to make a report, encouraging mandated reporters to consider if an infant is both affected and threatened by a birthing person's substance use. A positive substance use screen or toxicology result as a standalone is not indicative of child abuse or neglect. The severity of perinatal substance use is an important consideration and should be coupled with observations related to a caregiver's interaction with and their ability to care for the newborn. It is important to remember that over-reporting to child welfare has the potential to cause unintended harm to infants and families.
Always consider your cultural lens and your internal bias before making a report as race and poverty related disparities and disproportionality are reflected in the child welfare support um, referral system. And this is due to longstanding and systemic structural racism. Care should be taken to ensure that policy and practice which delineate criteria for toxicology testing and child welfare reporting do not directly or indirectly target low income families or families of color. In addition to familiarizing yourself with this newly revised Colorado law, we recommend that you review your hospital's protocol or policy for child welfare referrals and perinatal substance use screening. Additionally, in 2023, Support Colorado released toxicology guidance on evidence-based patient-centered practices. This is another excellent resource for hospital-based policy guidance. Addiction is a chronic but treatable medical condition. The language that we use to talk about addiction is often stigmatizing and it frames substance use in a shameful or a negative way that may prevent patients from seeking treatment. The intentional use of non-stigmatizing language takes practice. According to the National Harm Reduction Coalition, pregnant and parenting people who use substances are one of the most stigmatized and demonized subsets of the population. Experience with bias, judgment, and scrutiny, especially from healthcare workers, loved ones, family, and friends, can isolate people and make it harder for them to seek prenatal care, mental health counseling, social services, and community support. Stigma and biases from healthcare professionals can directly harm patient care, either through direct harm, such as patient neglect, the provision of certain contraindicated medications, or through creating an unwelcoming or demeaning space where the patient cannot trust their healthcare team. Additional stigma is placed on historically excluded groups such as Black, Hispanic, and Native birthing people, as well as people from low socioeconomic backgrounds. There are many excellent resource documents to familiarize you with the preferred language for substance use in the perinatal period. This table provides you examples of how terms like dirty, clean, and abuser can easily be substituted with language that decreases stigma and shame. Using person-first language, such as a person with a substance use disorder, demonstrates that you value the person and you're not defining them by their substance use. The language that we use for substance use and addiction can help create an inclusive environment that promotes treatment, and we know that treatment saves lives. Experiencing trauma or events such as parental divorce, living with a family member with substance use, abuse, or neglect strongly correlate with health risk behaviors later in life, including substance use. Trauma and persistent toxic stress can include historical and multi-generational trauma, such as racism and unsafe living conditions. With this understanding, providers can seek ways <clears throat> to acknowledge and address trauma as a hidden underlying risk for patients' lives. Healthcare providers rarely have a complete picture of a patient's trauma history. Trauma-informed care shifts the focus from asking what is wrong with you to what happened to you. Trauma-informed care acknowledges that understanding a patient's life experiences is key to delivering effective care, and it has the potential to improve patient engagement, treatment adherence, and health outcomes. A detailed discussion on the benefits of trauma-informed care are beyond the scope of this training, but we encourage you to explore how this approach benefits all patient populations. Harm reduction is the idea that since we cannot completely eliminate risks, we should do our best to minimize them. Substance use recovery occurs along a spectrum, and many people try several times before they can stop using substances. For this reason, care for the pregnant and postpartum persons with substance use should be blanketed in harm reduction. 
Harm reduction can often feel uncomfortable for healthcare providers who abide by the oath to do no harm. But sometimes this is an impossible task, and in these circumstances, harm reduction is a healthy goal. Some examples of harm reduction in our daily lives are wearing seatbelts, using condoms, or getting enough sleep. In the setting of perinatal substance use, harm reduction might look like avoiding co-sleeping while under the influence of alcohol or drugs, setting limits on when and where you use substances, attending a support group, or having naloxone on hand in case of an opioid overdose. These are some local and national resources for perinatal substance use. I encourage you to explore them and find ones that will be beneficial to your patient population. And these are this is our contact information at CPCQC. If you or your hospital facility are interested in a more in-depth quality improvement approach to perinatal substance use in your setting, we would be happy to partner with you on the next steps. Please contact us. Thank you.